And when last we were together, we were able to tell Net to switch one, but since no enable password had been set, we couldn't get into enable mode. So let's go over to the switch and we'll pretend we're somebody else at the switch and do a, uh, we'll put an enable secret in of CCNA. And now let's try this again. So I'm asked to user access verification. Well, of course, a good practice exam question or a real exam question is what password should I put in here? And it's always going to be the VTY line password here. It's not going to be the console password. It's not going to be the enable secret or the enable regular enable password. We're going to need to put in, what was it again? Success. Just kidding. So we're back at switch one. Now we're at the enable prompt. And what do we want to do now? We want to go into enable mode. And now this time we're prompted for the password. And of course, what do we put in here? If we had an enable password and an, and an enable secret configured, which one we put in? Always put in the enable secret. It always takes precedence. And you're in. So now I have successfully committed Telnet. I have Telneted over to the switch. I authenticated on the VTY lines, and then I went into enable mode and all is well. So let's go ahead and log out of there and always do this. There are two things you always want to do when you're leaving a client site. And especially if you've been there a long time, you know, you're just kind of frazzling. You just want to get out of there. You know, I know I'm not supposed to say that, but sometimes you just can't wait to get out of the client site and breathe, breathe free man's air. <laughs> and uh, so you go outside, but one thing you got to do, two things you got to do really. You've got to turn your debugs off, and we're going to do plenty of debugs later, and I'll show you how to do that. And you've always got to close any open telnet connections you have. So always do an exit or a log out here to cancel out or, or just leave your telnet connection. So let's see. We're in enable mode. We took care of all of that. Let's go over to the switch and have a look at the config at the very bottom here. And let's see what our config looks like right now. We've got online VTY04 and 515, password of success and login. Now, there is a way to skip the enable password. And there are two ways to do it. You can do it on a per user basis, which means we have to have a username password database. Or you can do a one size fits all command here on the VTY lines that will allow telnetted users to go straight to enable mode. They will not be prompted for the enable password. So this is a good command to know. I always worry about spelling privilege because I just always put PRIV, but I've always found, and I like to give you a good example here, when you're learning commands here in Cisco, I recommend you type the whole thing out as you're learning it and then later worry about abbreviating if you don't like to type. Nothing wrong with that. But privilege level 15, this assigns incoming Telnet users the highest privilege level there is, level 15, and that is the privilege to be put straight into enable mode and do pretty much whatever you want if you don't have them tied down some other way. So let's go back to router one and Telnet over now. And I'm gonna be asked for the VTY line password. And look at that. There is no prompt for the enable password there was no prompt for an enable secret. There was no prompt for anything. I was put straight into that config mode. So let's go ahead and log out of there. Go back over to the switch. And I keep hitting switch five. There we go. So now we've seen how to put a VTY line password on. We know all the steps you're going to be hit with when you log in. First off, you got to have the VTY line password. You should be asked for an enable secret or an enable password if you want to get into enable mode. Or the admin, meaning you and I, can use privilege level 15 on that device's VTY lines. That puts everybody straight into enable mode. Maybe you don't want that. So I'm going to pause the video here for a moment and build a username password database like we did earlier. And I'll show you exactly how to handle that on the VTY lines. Actually, I shouldn't have paused that. It didn't take very long, but this is the same commands, the same set of commands that we used earlier to create a username password database when we were protecting the console port. So you'll notice two of the users have username password combinations and that's it and that's fine. But for myself, I assigned myself privilege level 15. So now I'm gonna to go to the VTY lines and I'm gonna take off the password success. 
And I'm going to take off the, the privilege level command. This is just good housekeeping. If you're not using commands anymore, go ahead and take them off. I know in the console lab, console port lab, we left them on there for a little while, but I'll just go ahead and take them off now. And instead of login, what do I need here? Login local. So we'll go over and do a couple of tone outs and check this out at first. And if I put Jim, I have to put Mora. And there I am in enable mode. And I am indeed prompted for the password. So that all worked out exactly like it should have. Now I'll try connecting as myself by hitting the enter button. <laughs> there we go. And Bryant, and you'll notice I was put straight into privilege level mode. And just as a disclaimer, I, I mean, I like Jim Mora too. I don't want to make it sound like I don't like him. But anytime I use an athlete or anything like that for username, password, I get emails. How can you like that person? <laughs> it's like whatever ball game was on in the workspace when I was doing this, whatever, whatever game we're watching off YouTube, that's usually what gets put in there. So no real plan there. So we've got everything really tied down here as far as Telnet goes. We've looked at it from not having the VTY line password. We solved that. We saw what happens when you don't have an enable password. We solved that. We have privilege level 15 down, and we know how to make a username database and have some people go into privilege level 15 without having others go into 15. So let's talk about Telnet for just a minute or two here and maybe a drawback or two because, and these are drawings I had for you, but you don't need these because we saw them all live. Telnet is great when you're zipping around your internal network, but I did mention, you know, you don't want to get caught by that password thing at two in the morning when you're trying to log in and do it, some kind of change. You really need to think twice about doing it, using it across a WAN, using it outside of an internal network, period. And the big problem there is Telnet sends everything in clear text everything. The data is in clear text, the password's in clear text, and then once the wrong person gets a hold of that information, they can come right in and take over your router. They may come in and erase a config. That certainly happened in the past. Uh, they might come in and take a device over, make it a rogue device, and you don't even know that it's a rogue device. It's not just that they could turn it in, connect to another device, and then destroy a couple of configs. They could start collecting information from these devices, and you don't even know they're collecting it. So you got to be super careful with Telnet passwords. They do get passed around from time to time, and we can't let that happen. But another reason we got to be careful with Telnet is just this reason. So that password is going to go straight across. The data goes straight across, and someone who picks that off says, okay, I got, I got the data, but even more importantly, I got the keys to the kingdom. I got the password. Now, just one port down at TCP port 22, and that is TCP port 22, is Secure Shell. And it's a much more secure version of Telnet because SSH encrypts everything, data and passwords. And you immediately look at this and you say, well, why does anybody use Telnet? Why are we even talking about it when the password and the data and username, anything else is, is going to be hashed? Why do we still do that? Well, one of the usual answers for that question I've seen in documentation over the years, well, SSH is more complex to configure. And first off, we're not scared of that. And secondly, I think you'll agree with me, it would be hard to be less complex than Telnet is. The only real issue you bump into with SSH is that not every device supports it. And really, that's not much of an excuse these days because it's more and more commonly used. Now, we do have to save SSH configs for another day. But for now, be aware of that one major difference between Telnet and SSH for your exam is that SSH everything's hashed, everything's encrypted. Telnet, nothing is encrypted. And all the other tips you've seen here in this video and you'll be more than ready for the exam. But again, you'll actually use SSH in much the same way you use Telnet. It's not a complex command to use by any means. It's the setup that can be a little, that is a little more difficult. But again, certainly nothing you can't handle, but we do have to save that for another day. So coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit more about some switch ports, a couple more commands as we get an eye toward moving toward more routing. So I'll see you on the next video.